Welcome to This Is Tattoo, a podcast about tattooing. Basically, what I will be doing with this podcast is, uh, you know, talking to tattooers, talking about um, their lineage, where they came from, who they learned from, uh, tattooers that they've come into contact with. I'm pretty excited about this podcast. I think it'll be interesting for people that are just interested in taking a deeper dive into tattooing and just kind of hearing from us, you know? A lot of, uh, I think, tattooers are, are pretty elusive to people um, because a lot of us just, uh, we just post our work and that's pretty much it. So my goal uh, with this podcast and the various things that I'm doing, my YouTube channel and things like that, um, is to kind of take back the narrative of uh, what tattooing is actually like. Um, I think a lot of people get a lot of their information from what tattooing is from, you know, TV shows that are, you know, played up to be something it totally isn't. You know what I mean? A lot of us tattooers aren't very vocal about um, our thoughts on, uh, on, on various things. So I'm just kind of trying to, you know, do something that would be kind of, um, you know, kind of interesting and something that I think a lot of tattooers would be like, okay, yeah, that's that's more what tattooing is like. You know what I mean? So on our first episode of This Is Tattoo, uh, we have Sergio Hernandez, who is the owner of Pops Tattoo in San Diego, California. He is an incredible tattooer, incredible artist. Um, I was really excited to be able to have the chance to sit down with him and kind of talk a little bit and learn about... Um, his journey in tattooing. Today's episode of This Is Tattoo is brought to you by Chroma Tattoo Ink. Chroma Tattoo Ink is made of 100% powder pigment. It has no acrylic resins in it, and it saturates into the skin as fast or faster than any predispersed ink. Wow, I can't believe I actually was able to knock that out, really. Oh man, that's cool. Okay, so anyways, what does that mean? Well, 100% powder pigments are the best pigments. We all know that, especially for uh, color, bright, bold, uh, traditional tattooing. Um, the fact that it has no acrylic resins in it means that it will not dry in your ink cap. It won't dry even if it's left out. And it is an incredible process. Damien, who owns Chroma, um, we were talking on the phone for a little while, and he was explaining his process. It took him years to develop uh, this process of making ink, you can actually just leave the leave the bottle open. Damien said, "You leave the bottle open, and it it won't dry out." I mean, that's that's insane to me. You know, um, it saturates into the skin really quickly. That's one thing he was talking to me about. It took them a lot of trial and error, a long, long time, for them to figure out how to make this ink saturate into your skin um, super easily. And, uh, and I mean, it shows that there's a lot of effort put into this. So if you are a tattooer, professional tattooers only, um, go pick yourself up a bottle. I reached out to Chroma because I love their ink. And I wanted to make sure that if anybody's going to be sponsoring um, my podcast or any of my endeavors, I would want them to be some stuff that I use and I back 100%. So I'm telling you, it's got my stamp of approval. If that means anything to you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, check it out, man. You won't be disappointed. Anyways, here is This Is Tattoo with Sergio Hernandez. <clears throat> yeah, so. Here we are, ladies so pretty and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to figure this out. You no, know? that's cool. Um, okay. So who, who like, where'd you get your star? Who taught you? Who okay, taught you so I was saying, uh, Jesse Mercado, um, I was painting a mural in downtown San Diego. And uh, he said he was gonna open up a tattoo shop. I had no tattoos on me, zero interest in tattooing at all. And uh, he said, I'm opening up a tattoo shop. I'm familiar with your artwork. Would you be, would you be down to be you know, my apprentice and, and I'll teach you how to tattoo? Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple weeks before then, I had quit my nine to five job in the middle of the fucking day. And I said, I'm never gonna work for anyone ever again. And I'm gonna become an, uh, make a living through art and I had no idea what the fuck that meant or how I was going to do it and and then two weeks later I ran into Jesse Mercado and I started working at Concrete Jungle that was in 2002. It's crazy that's a bold ass statement homie. Yeah dude yeah I mean and I just decided from one morning to lunchtime that I was going to do that 
That's crazy. Yeah. So what, what was like a, did something like somebody like. I think I was just having a bad day, dude, just driving to work. And I'm like, you know, every, my parents, you know, I love them, but they were always wanted me to be um, cautious about don't make big choices like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I always was. And then finally I'm like, dude, I'm never going to be successful at anything if I'm always playing it safe. Right. Fuck this shit. Yeah. Today's my day. And then I wrote an email to the manager telling him, like, fuck this shit. I'm never going to work for anyone ever again. I don't like this job, and I'm out of here. And I left during lunch, and I never went back to, uh, to another job ever again. That's sick. It's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. And so when Jesse offered me that opportunity, You're I was like, like, there's the path. No, I, it, it was crazy itself. because I didn't say. I'll, at first, I was like, no, dude, fuck that. Oh, I'm really? not going to. Yeah. And, and I, I've heard stories about uh, apprenticeships and the hazing and all that shit. And so I was like, hey, man, here's the deal, dude. I don't have no tattoos. I don't even like tattooing. I don't know what the fuck tattooing is all about. But more importantly, I can't have someone treat me like, yeah. oh, like they're above me or over me. Mm -hmm. I can't do that shit. If, you're going, if we all, all learn under you and I'll listen and follow directions, but I can't have you treat me less than a man, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, no problem. Yeah, and, and then, how old were you at that point then? I must have been uh, 23, 24, or something That's like crazy. that. That's crazy, yeah. Yeah, dude, and shit, man, I, I was with him for a couple years, and then the opportunity came to go to Seven Seas, and uh, Jesse gave me his blessing, and Dan Pryor was cool with, Dan Pryor and Milford were cool with me working at Seven Seas, and, and that's where I started really starting to develop a, a style that, that I have today, you know? That's cool, man. Yeah. Let's, let's cruise back a little bit to, to lefties, just because I want to talk about... Oh, yeah. So I was at Concrete Jungle. What I was saying is that the tattoo shop Lefties was right down the street. And Lefties is owned by Paul Dismala, and uh, he learned under Lefty Al Miller from um, Masters Tattoo, I think, <laughs> yeah. And so... and. Lefty Al Miller lived in the neighborhood and he would go into a concrete jungle and he would walk up the stairs and sit there and talk about the old days and talk about his tattoo machines. And I don't know, man, he's just like, yeah, I surreal. had, I had Jess, I, I had no idea who he was or anything. You know, I mean, I just, Jess, he was just like, Oh, he's an old tattooer, man. Lefty Al Miller. He's a legend. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why would a legend be hanging out in here? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. You know? <laughs> And dude, it was just a cool dude, man. Yeah, that's awesome. cool. All yeah. those all those old dudes have like super cool stories, and that's yeah. kind of like what I'm I'm trying to do with this thing is like just talk a little bit, just give our you know. Yeah. To you, maybe it doesn't seem like that interesting. You're like, well, I don't know. It's just like how I came into tattooing, but yeah. To me, you know, like I wasn't around back then. I'm like, man, that's so super interesting. I like to see where people came from, and like that's my favorite shit about tattooing. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Because it's real special. It's it's interesting how we gravitate to this thing, you know. I still feel like I'm a I still feel like I'm a beginner. Like I'm just a tourist in yeah. the tattoo thing. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I'm a I'm a fan of it, and I feel like just honored to to be a part of it. Not like oh, thank you to everyone. That, no, it's just like man, I'm we're I'm just grateful. You yeah, know, I'm really grateful sure. to be a part of it. For sure. Yeah, as yeah. we should be. We should always be. I think that's how like uh, you continue to do well and like continue to grow is by being that's what dan and i were talking about was like if you always are just being constantly humble but like like legit humble right, you know right. like that's how you continue to grow and you'll you know yeah you keep keep realizing like dude this shit is way better than a nine to five like you said yeah like you quit a nine to five i quit my nine to five like 10 11 years ago i haven't worked one yeah, yeah, you and know, also so if long. you're if you're humble and grateful, then you're gonna keep getting better at tattooing. To this day, I mean, I've been tattooing for like whatever, 15, 16 years or whatever. Uh, I still feel like my tattoos are gradually getting better and better. That's great. And so as soon as I notice that that's not happening anymore, um, I don't want to be involved. You know, I don't yeah. want to keep tattooing. Right. So right now I'm still getting better. So I'm really happy because I got Jane and Joe to work with and. You know, they Fantastic keep inspiring me. Yeah, yeah, man, sure. they keep inspiring me. That's important. Yeah, to surround yourself with good people. You know. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so then you moved over to 
Seven Seas with Milford and, and Dan. Yeah. Uh, how long did they have Seven Seas before you? you a couple of years, man. I really don't want to go and I just don't know the, the details of it. But I mean, know? it was already established. Yeah, it was I established. Mean, it yeah. But it was still a fucking, anything. it's still a fucking pirate ship, you know, when I went over there. <laughs> yeah. And so, man, if, if I remember correctly, and I always make up shit in my head, but... I think I went to Seven Seas. Milford, Milford was like, dude, yeah, of course, man, you should work with us. And so uh, I started working there, nervous as fuck. I don't know shit about, you know, mm -hmm. I've only been an apprentice or a tattoo for two years or whatever. And then nobody is at the shop for like a whole fucking week because there's no schedule, there's no <laughs> nothing, you know? And I show up and I'm just there, not one walk in. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And then. You know, I, I, I thought I was going in and they were going to show me how to do their style of tattooing. It was like, dude, you're on your own, man. We're all figuring this shit out. And so I freaked out and I went back to Concrete Jungle. Oh, really? Yeah. You just dipped on that job? Yeah. You were I was just like, like dude, I can't no, do this. I, I, there's not one walk in. I'm not making no money. You guys aren't here. I don't even know how to tattoo. What the fuck? <laughs> like, I'm not ready for this shit, you know? And I fucking bitched out. I went back to Concrete Jungle for a little bit. And then uh, I forgot there was like some sort of disagreement with me and Jesse. But he's like, hey, dude, if you want to go work somewhere else, go ahead. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to work out of my house. dude. Mm -hmm. And so um, so uh, I started trying to tattoo out of my house. I bought all my equipment. And then uh, I think Milford left Seven Seas like overnight or some weird shit happened. Mm -hmm. dude. Like it was yeah. crazy Milford yeah. shit, you know. And uh and Dan allowed me to come back to the tattoo shop. God bless his soul, man. Mm -hmm. And so Dan Pryor gave me a second fucking chance. And uh, that's where I really developed my style, you know, because it was uh, Kaz that was there. Mm -hmm. Kaz, Dan Pryor and Tyler Densley. And uh, yeah, Milford influence on the whole shit. What a you know? crazy shop. It was nuts, dude. Dude, that's got to be like Tyler chaos. and Milford. Oh, it in was Kaz, fucking nuts, in, in Dan, like yeah. it, it had to be so loose that like. And so what happened too is that when Milford left, he fucking took everything off the walls. From what I remember, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, he took everything off the walls, and so the shop was empty, dude. And we're like, well, what the fuck are we gonna do now? And uh, Kaz that same day started painting flash mm -hmm. he was like what, what do you mean what we're we gonna do we're gonna fill up these walls <laughs> and i was like oh shit like i don't even know what that is like what are we what are we doing you know yeah and so that was a huge inspiration for me watching um kaz just paint like his work ethic is what was the most inspiring and seeing him get so much better so fast you know because of his work ethic yeah. And I'm like, oh, it, now it makes sense. Whoever puts in the most fucking hours, that's who's going to get good, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's no, oh, you know, don't blame anybody. It just don't happen. blame, yeah, yeah don't blame gonna... everyone else for you not being successful yeah. or you not being good. Yeah. It's just whatever, hour, whatever hours you put in, that's what you're going to get back, mm -hmm. you know, as yeah. far as skill level and customers and all that shit. That's you what's know? great about tattooing. Yeah. I think that's what's great about tattooing is the, <laughs> is the should... fact that, like, you get what you put in, yeah. you know, like you literally do because it's, it's, you work hard, you paint a bunch of flash, yeah. you'll be tattooing a lot of that flash. Anytime yeah. I paint flash, I tattoo, yeah, tattoo you know, it, like yeah. that's, that's literally, you know, I see a lot of this stuff. I'm like, oh damn, I didn't realize you painted that. Yeah. And I've seen it on your Instagram. You already tattooed it. Oh you yeah. You know what I mean? Most like, of it. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what's great about tattooing. Yeah, you, man. You put it in, you, you do what you got to do and, and, um, and that applies to life too. Yeah, all I aspects agree. of life, you know, all aspects of life, yeah. whatever you put in, that's, I don't know, man. I just read so many books about it. It's like, fuck dude, whatever you get, what you deserve basically, yeah. you know? So let make me sure. just sidetrack real quick. Yeah, let's what do it. What book are you reading right now? The, I got or, this or Thomas Sowell. I got what, the what Thomas really Sowell, like. Thomas Sowell book. Mm -hmm. It's spelled S O W E L L. Mm -hmm. It's called discrimination and disparities or disparities and discrimination. I think it's okay. a Thomas Sowell book. He's Thomas an economist. Sowell. He does research about uh, different policies and how they affect the the inner city. Yeah, you know, and so I'm, I'm just interested in those. I know that. Subjects. I know that's something yeah. that you're interested. And so in. I'm just I, yeah. I like reading stuff like that. Yeah, you know? for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading right now Dune. 
No way. Yeah, have you ever read that book? No, but I was seeing the movie. Oh, it's dude. totally different. Yeah, know. it's super yeah. different. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about it, and so I'm like, I'm like, dude, I gotta read this book. How is it? Pretty fun? Oh man, super interesting. And the parallels. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. So really? we, that's like, yeah, dude. Like, I know you. I yeah. think Dune would be right up. It's like 800 yeah. pages or oh, something. Huh? It's it's forever pages. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But okay. uh, but well, it's fun, you yeah. know. Like it's a, it's a it's a really well written and it's a it's a good read for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not that far into it at all, but uh, but yeah, that's cool. Anyways, um, and so yeah, dude, I was working at Seven Seas. I, I I was at the same station for over ten years. Jeez. And Dan Pryor is the best fucking boss anyone could ever have. Yeah, he's great. And then um, yeah, and then we opened up Pops about four years ago. That's sick, man. Yeah. And so how'd you open up Pops? Who, who was with you? Well, it was, um, I said I wouldn't open up a shop unless it was in my neighborhood because there's shops everywhere and, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like. And, and when you cruise around this neighborhood, you see your murals. It's crazy. I love walking yeah. around this mural, like yeah, this yeah. neighborhood, because I see a bunch of your murals that you've done. Yeah. That's I, cool. I feel like it's community service. And a yeah. lot of them, I don't even write my name on them or nothing. I mean, people no, but still, I know your, people I know still know style. I did them and yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure. But uh, but yeah, so it's in my neighborhood. I uh, I lived here in the '80s, and I and my dad's own property here in in East San Diego for the you know since the '80s, and mm -hmm. and then Jane found the building, the one that's on the next block, and she's like, dude, check this shit out. That's and crazy. Uh, yeah, we made it happen. And so like you opened it pretty much by yourself then. Yeah, like, well, I mean, original? Jane, yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, Jane, Jane like yeah. made everything happen, like paperwork and all that shit. She, yeah, because I. I would have never opened up a shop. Dude. I just don't have the mental focus to like go to the office and fill out this paper and go do that. Mm -hmm. And so Jane made it happen. I started teaching Jane how to tattoo. She's been killing it. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. So I had uh, the homie JT that was working with me for, for uh, the first year or year and a half. And then Joe Garlic from Bakersfield is now working with us. Yeah. And he's like, powerhouse dude I that guy's that fucking dude. cool as fuck i wish he was here right now yeah i'd love to hang out with that dude yeah right yeah now. he's cool man yeah so um so just going back to your time at seven seas so uh was there a point where uh so you you showed up and and everything was like you're like dude i can't do this so you went back to concrete jungle and yeah. then dan like after milford had peaced out yeah uh, dan was like okay hey come hang out you know like come come do tattoos um, what was it like working under solely Dan? Was it still very loose? Who was who very else was working? Loose, man. Who else very was working crazy. Yeah. So it was uh, yeah, Kaz, Tyler, and um, Kaz, Tyler, and Dan. I think that was it, man. And how long did all all four of you guys work together? It was for dude. I'm just gonna guess five years or something yeah. like that. Yeah, nobody's fact checking. And then Thor. Either. Thor worked there too. Oh, so sick. I remember we went to Reno and in the we did the Reno convention. It was me, Dan, Kaz, uh, Tyler, and Thor. That's sick. And so that was a crazy trip, man. Yeah, that's yeah crazy. we got yeah, it was fun, dude. Yeah. How many times did you do Lady Luck? Maybe twice. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't really like doing conventions or guest spots or anything like that. I don't know, dude. You don't even like guest spots? Not really. Yeah? Not really. How do you see your homies? You they just come go here. visit? Yeah, they come here. They come right? here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just they just I, come. See I create me. a little island for myself right here, man. I like I'm chill, dude. I'm, no, but I, know, I, I do like to up. go visit Hector Fong at Tattoo Thirteen in Oakland. Yeah, that's, that's my boy, dude. Yeah. That fool is so fucking cool. That dude is insane. And yeah. thank God for Credit, Freddie Corbin letting me visit over there, you know, because mm -hmm. you can't just work there without his blessing, you know. Yeah, for sure. Freddie's such shit. a nice dude, man. That dude's sick. Dude, he's Legend. a sweetheart, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember we were talking like, I mean, not to get too political real quick, but uh, right when like COVID shit started yeah. popping up and he was like, what do you say? I actually, I probably shouldn't even say it. Well, he was just, I, I, I might edit it later, but um, he was like, he's like, dude, I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid, dude. That's right. what like, and that, this was when like COVID hadn't even come, like it was like. It was still in China. February. Yeah. There was the video and of people dropping person, dead yeah, in China. And they had, like, like, yeah. and and they had like, like one person like come to the United States and like like that was tracked that right. like, worked for like Amazon or something like that. Right. And he was like, dude, I can't I can't live my life afraid. Yeah. You know? And I was like, Yeah, that's right, man. Like, that's true. You yeah. know? 
But at the same time, I mean, that has connotations of its own, but, you know, whatever. Whatever. Um, but he was just a sweetheart of a dude, man. He was he was super nice. I took pictures of him. He was tattooing my uh, my homie while we were out there. Um, he got like uh, two roses on yeah. his hands. From, That's from sick. Freddie. That's sick. fucking awesome. Yeah. I bet. Yeah, it was really really cool. Um, so yeah, dude. I mean, I'm just yeah. I learned from all those dudes. I learned from everyone that I work with, pretty much. You know. So yeah, that's I'm, how I'm, all... I'm lucky that I was able to work with who who I worked with and. They were over my shoulder telling me what was fucking whack. And then I'd be on, you know, MySpace or fucking Instagram or whatever the <laughs> fuck. And, and I'd be like, oh, man, this guy's a good tattooer. And Tyler would come over my shoulder and be like, that's shit. He's such a naysayer, though. But, dude, that, God bless him for that. No, I know. Because or else I would have I thought that shit's dope. And then now oh, that yeah, I look at that sure. stuff, I'm like, oh, that is corny or that is hella whack. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And thank goodness that there's people out there like Tyler being hypercritical and shit talking you know it's a, it's a good and a bad thing but know. you know he's like 50 50 with everybody dude. i know dude it's I know. so crazy yeah and yeah. so uh dude he i love that honestly on game you and know I exactly be- what you know exactly what you get from him yeah you know? yeah and like that's that's with you too like i feel like that for you like Thanks, dude. you you know exactly what you get there's no fronting there's no faking the funk there's no yeah. like pretending like uh you know exactly where i stand and uh, yeah, I don't if, ever if there's wanna, some bullshit, then I'm just going to call it I'm out. I'm going to call and it like, out. Yeah. I know, dude. And sometimes it gets know, me in trouble. But like a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people don't like it, but at least I'm being honest with you. Yeah. I don't know, man. Right. That's all I can and, do. And also, I think the, the two things with you and Tyler is um, I feel like there's no love lost. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, like, well, I'm just, I'm just telling you that's bullshit. Yeah. But, like, we can still be homies. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> And Kaz was like that too, you know. He had a very distinct uh, personal taste of what a good tattoo is. Yeah. You know, and Tyler was like that too. And even Dan Pryor, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he's the most loving, cool dude. Yeah. You know, like he's just, he's down with everything, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, and so having people having a strong opinion about what is a good tattoo and a bad tattoo yeah. was very helpful for me, mm-hmm. you know? And now, I'm definitely like that, you know. There, I got my personal taste. I, yeah, for I know sure. what I like, you know. I don't like much. Yeah, I don't like a lot of shit, you know. But that's fine. That's, yeah, that's it. No, I, that's cool. Man. Yeah, I feel like everyone should be doing tattoos that they think are the best tattoos they could do. Obviously, I mean that's that should be everyone's goal, right? Not doing tattoos that they're like, oh, this ain't gonna age well, or oh, this is gonna oh, look, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Knowing that, like, right off the bat, like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, then don't do it, dude. Yeah. Don't do, don't put some shit on somebody you can't back, you know? I don't know. That's How do you funny. feel after you do a tattoo? I feel fucking great. Yeah. I mean, I'm really critical of myself, so my first thing is like, oh, fuck, I should have. Yep. I should have done yeah, this I or that. I dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once in a while, I do a tattoo that's like, Oh fuck, that's that's a good one, man. Isn't that like, crazy yeah, when yeah. you when you when you hit it? And yeah, you're like, like all the most you know, ninety nine yeah. percent of the lines are just crispy, clean. The black is nice and saturated, and everything's like hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you worry a lot about lines? A little bit less than I used to. Yeah. But uh, and then I see someone else do a really clean tattoo, and I'm like, oh wait a minute, let me go back to that and just focus that, mm-hmm. to slow down to make sure every single line's crispy clean you know but there's also people that don't focus so much on the cleanest lines and a lot of times i like those tattoos better you know Mm -hmm. i I have a some of my favorite tattooers their line work is not very good yeah yeah (laughs) i didn't want to say shit (laughs) yeah yeah but yeah like uh you know, like, but there's like so much soul in those tattoos. Yeah, for so sure. So I was like trying to emulate soul by like making my line work shitty for a little bit. It's a tough balance. It's, it's not, a tough it balance, dude. Work, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there's people that are like the cleanest, most perfect tattoos, and I'm like, dude, that's fucking boring as it, fuck, dude. dude a perfect yeah. tattoo is so boring. I mean, a, it's just I don't, know, I don't know, man. I don't know where. To... I don't. I don't like it, man, because yeah. it's like. And then when you have those people that talk to you, like they're like. Uh, uh, you know, like one day, like engineers are gonna figure out how to like just you put your arm in a machine and oh, it gives right, you a tattoo. Right. It's like, yeah, but that's like boring as fuck, dude. You got yeah. none of the experience of like anything of, yeah. of that tattoo or any of their like soul or anything. Oh shit, I see a Tyler right here, huh? TJD, yeah, the little graffiti dog. 
yeah, can we can we take a second and and I did this with Dan and I think it'd be kind of fun. Can we take a second and like kind of look at some of your tattoos? Yeah, for cool? sure. So that's a Tyler. Yeah. And oh, then man, the, you're gonna put me on the spot. Here. I know. Trevor Taylor did this one. I know that for a fact. Yeah, Trevor's sick. And then uh, Walter McDonald did course. that. Of course, Salty Walt. So, and then what else do you got? Uh, dude, ashy fucking arms. But yeah, Dan Pryor did that. Uh, Kaz did this. Look at that girl head. So oh wow! Silly. How yeah. old is that? That's probably 10 years here. those fucking eyes. Yeah, he's good, dude. He's like some of the best. He's amazing. Yeah, he's, he's some of the best girl heads, dude. Yeah, you know, I saw, he worked that, really I saw hard. this big thing at, at Seven Seas, this giant, um, what was it, like a tiger head? Like uh-huh. a straight on tiger head? Oh, yeah. And he painted it in like, uh, I think uh, Schmidt was telling me, he painted like four hours or something. It's like oh, yeah. No, it's a wolf. Oh, big it's wolf. It's a wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew it was a big animal. One day. We yeah. had an art show coming up and he just... What the hell? Yeah, killed it, dude. What an insane... Yeah. Yeah. So his work ethic is, for me... But he sat down like all day. And all just, fucking like, day. He had his little didn't granola, yeah. didn't move. He just fucking busted his ass, dude. <laughs> and after that, I have, I've never complained about... Well, how come I don't have more customers, or how come, dude? I created my own fucking reality here, <laughs> right, you know? Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. What else you got, though? Let's see what else you got. Oh, what else do I got? Yeah, let's see. Um, Tyler did this. This. Um, That's crazy. That doesn't yeah. even look like Tyler. I would never have guessed that Tyler yeah, did that. Yeah, sick. And That's then Richard sick. Stell did the. Richard the Stell? Yeah. That's tight. Yeah, rest his soul, man. Yeah. Legend. Legend. That dude is crazy, huh? Yeah, dude. Did you work with him ever? No, I met him in San Antonio. That's where I got tattooed. I got, I got a convention. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. What, what year was that? This was uh, maybe about six years ago or something oh, like that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he dude. only he died like a few years ago, right? Uh, maybe, Three yeah. Maybe ago, a maybe? year or two. I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah. Time's weird. Yeah. That's crazy, though. He's a badass. Mm-hmm. What do you got on your... Uh, what do you got on your torso, oh, man? I don't even know. I don't oh, even man. know, actually. I'm, a, I'm. I might ask you to take your shirt off. <laughs> Holy a, shit! What's that? Uh, Tyler did the chest piece. Tyler did that. Yeah, it was a cover up of all types of crazy shit that I. That had. guy's crazy. Yeah. What's that double barrel girl? Uh, Michael Duke. Yeah, it's sick, yeah. dude. Michael Duke's the man, dude. If you guys. I don't, I actually don't. don't know Michael Duke. Okay, so Michael Duke is the shit. You guys should look him up and follow his work is he is he out here or is he he's in fullerton fullerton yeah i think he does some of the best black and gray shit in my for opinion. reals yeah yeah i like yeah, his i gotta style, check him out know? his style's so so sick so strong you know yeah yeah i would love to look at it yeah that is really strong dude mm-hmm. yeah do you have anything on your back yeah i got a uh, sorry man i'm, oh, gonna, I'm good, just dude. gonna make you get naked dude i'll show you the milford back piece. oh fuck me i would love to see rainbow charizard oh here we go yeah Yo! Pretty crazy, right? Sorry. Dude, how old is that thing? That's probably like 15 years old. 15 years old? Maybe. That's amazing. Yeah. And so he saved me, dude, because that was one of my first tattoos. And, uh, you know, when you don't know shit about tattooing, you just yeah. ask for wacky shit. So Tree I bark. Like, I want a phoenix. Yeah. In my head, I'm fucking thinking Harry Potter licking phoenix with flame. You know, like some yeah, stupid yeah, shit. Yeah. And basically, he just did an American Eagle with a bunch of and colors. It's sick, yeah, though. dude. So yeah. saying, I could have ended up with a fucking fiery Harry Potter phoenix on my back, man. That would have been really bad. I mean, it'd still be sick, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it yeah. wouldn't have been. Yeah, no, that's sick, dude. That's crazy. So I want to do that for people, you know, when they come in and ask for whack shit. I don't want to tell them, like. That's whack. Yeah, I don't want to tell them, this is why your idea sucks. No, I want to, like always say something positive so mm-hmm. I could like I don't want some whack shit so I'm just gonna take anything that I could take out of that idea that could be good and powerful and hopefully uh, and do that for him try to steer him that way okay let's yeah. run it let's run a little like a little test then I come in I'm gonna walk it yeah hey I kind of want that I saw this like sick ass dude have you seen the fucking uh, the Phoenix from Harry Potter I would yeah. love one of that on my back, dude. What exactly. Do you, what do you, like, could you do exactly. that for me? What, what do you think? I'm like, yeah, think? dude. I have to draw my own. Let me do my thing. Let me get. Let me get some creative uh, freedom here. Of and, course, and you're the, you're the artist. Yeah, obviously. exactly. Like, yeah. And then I gave him the American Eagle. 
<laughs> yeah, it's great. You just it works put more out. Colors yeah, in it. just put more colors in it. It's fucking perfect. Yeah, that's sick, dude. Yeah, that's how. It yeah, works. you do. You really do have to finesse people, and then also you kind of have to put your pride to the side. You know, yeah. like like don't be like, ah, oh, it's dumb. I'm gonna do this. You know, right? Of course. Like make it seem like find... it's their idea. Exactly. You, know? you got to make like... them feel empowered. You know, mm-hmm. if you like completely destroyed someone's self-confidence in their idea and then you have to do a sick-ass panther instead of they're like well cool you just fucking jacked off on my arm dude congrats like (laughs) right yeah that's not what i wanted yeah you're a great tattooer thanks a lot i asked for you know a jesus and you did whatever the fuck you wanted yeah i don't know you know i mean you have to get out of your your own way and be like yeah uh, like the idea is not bad it's just the way you're envisioning it is incorrect right so envision it in your way and make it something that they think is sick. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, a lot of times people are like, oh, I want this thing. And you're like, that's fucking lame, dude. Yeah, no, that's sick, dude. I'll, I'll just print it off of Google Images and, like, do whatever. It's like, dude, take the time. Like, somebody actually wants to, like, spend money. Yeah. Like, do this thing. Like, you're still in a service industry. Mm-hmm. I know it's like a lot of people are like, well, you know, I do what I want to do. And, yeah. like, that's great, too. But yeah. I've like told the best people, people I'm, not, is like, I'm not the tattooer for you. I've told yeah, people that, sure. you know? So I don't want to be like, But I think there's oh, a way that's you can a, find... That's a great idea. And then go to the back and shit on the customer. I don't want to ever do that. That's fake like, as fuck, dude. dude. Fucking, look at this fucking idiot. He wants me to do... Blah. And then, hey, so yeah, man, we're going to do... I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not being honest with myself, dude. Like, mm-hmm. that's fucking whack, you know? And I'm not being honest with the customer, so... And then how do you feel comfortable, like, all your homies, like, at the shop, just heard you shit on somebody yeah and then go like fake the funk yeah and then it's like that's not Yo, good is this motherfucker like talking Doing shit that to on me, me? <laughs> yeah, yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like that's immediately what yeah. i think I'm, I'm not like this dude turns it on and yeah. he can like make his money no like, i'm just like, you're like oh, this is you're a pretender, weird. Man. Yeah, yeah yeah that's fake yeah dude. so uh i was I always try to look out for the customer but you can frame it in a way i've seen yeah. i've actually because being here i've seen you talk to people and yeah. frame it in a way of like yeah, I'm going to make it like kind of my own something I'll be really excited about because what they got really excited about is they saw something that was a good tattoo. Mm. And then you're like, yeah, I can do a really good tattoo. Yeah. They're going to be both different styles, but um, I'm going to have a lot of fun. And at the end of it, you're going to be pretty stoked on on what I do, but we're going to keep it within the realm of like, I'm not telling you, yeah, you want to, you want a Phoenix? I'm just going to do a, a, uh, bowling pin eagle. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. with a uh, little pink in the yeah. frills, you know? Like, see, and then you tell them, see, the thing about you is you're stupid. <laughs> you know, it's not good, dude. It's more like that, dude. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Up, yeah. 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 So who, uh, were you just from the, from the, from the get, like, did you feel like your bedside manner was like on point or do you think like there was somebody that you worked with that was like really good with people? Um, I seen how some people were with customers and I thought to myself, oh, I don't want to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. It was more so of that. So who, who was that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so who's really bad with customers? Yeah, yeah. No. Um, <laughs> no okay, I'm, okay, okay. I'm just kidding. Let me give you I an actually, example, though. No, no, no. You don't have to. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. There, no, me, I think I actually... Just go. You know, do it. Do know. it. I'll edit it out. Here. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Milford's one of my favorite <laughs> fucking people, dude. All right? I fucking love the dude. I know. You know? I He's love him, one of the too. best artists. But I've had him, I, I've seen him be annoyed with the customer because of the request. And he goes to the back and he's just like, fuck these fucking customers. I fucking hate them. <laughs> and so, uh, and I'm just like, oh, shit, you know? And then, like, 20 minutes of him sketching some bullshit and he just crumbles it and throws it away. And then he walked out the back door. And just left. And just left. And then 45 minutes, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, I don't think Milford's ever fucking coming back, you know? <laughs> and then finally the customer's like, uh, hey, um, do you know where Milford is? Cause, uh, is he drawing? And I have to go to the front and be like, I don't think he's coming back, dude. I don't really yeah, know where he yeah. didn't tell me. Yeah, yeah. He's so probably going to go shit, you surf know? for yeah. a little bit. That's so funny, dude. Fucking nuts. Yeah. I actually think like being able to talk to customers and like be really good with customers is like a really good skill. Like that's oh, like yeah. part of tattooing, you know, For like sure. it's a big Tyler is really good at talking to customers. Yeah. You know, like I really like watching him like 
interact with the customer and then like he just does what he does and then you're like damn they were really cool with that he's like yeah i just kind of told them whatever I'm yeah like, yeah you were really friendly though yeah it's good what happened bro why aren't right. you friendly with me? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Shit talking, Tyler. Um, well, I gotta, I gotta tattoo some yeah, pumpkins yeah, yeah, with the for kids. Sure, for sure. I gotta yeah. tattoo pumpkins. No, that's great, man. Thank right. you so much for talking to me. Yeah, man. for sure, man. Yeah. If you ever do like a, you know, some other show, fucking let me know, or if I'm ever in your part of the town. Or yeah, I was up. talking to Dan yesterday because I did a podcast with him. He yeah. was saying like it'd be really fun for uh, you guys to talk together and just kind of reminisce and that's kind of what i want to do is like just have people reminiscing and like like not so worried about timelines or what's exactly correct just kind of like i mean all of our memories are flawed you know right right so whatever we kind of remember like things you know tall tales whatever folklore i i love to hear all of it you know so so yeah i definitely want to revisit you and dan for sure and just talk about what those early days were like um you know, with Milford and yeah, man, and all that. I mean, it had to have been the craziest shop, dude. Yeah, with, with Tyler the way he is, and, and Milford the way he is, and Dan just being like, "Yeah, everything's cool," and yeah. then like you also being like, "Everything's cool," but also everybody also trying to push it really hard. I'm yeah, like, dude, that's, that's that was be the, so crazy that, because there's that, that, that dichotomy. Part of it. Yeah, yeah. Like, because everybody. That's why you got got along was yeah. because everybody's trying to push it yeah. and really trying to be the best, like do the best tattoo that they can. Yeah, it felt like friendly competition. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it was like, who's going to do the fucking banger today? You know what I mean? And then I'd see Tyler finish a tattoo and I'd be like, oh my God, that's hard. And then Dan, like, look at what I just finished. You know what I mean? Yeah. Being in that environment, I always lost. I always lost back then, dude. Get out of here! I, those guys were fucking killers, you know. And I was, yeah. I was trying to come up, and so it was good motivation for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I mean, it's a great environment to learn for all of you guys, too. Yeah, man. You know, yeah. That's great, man. Well, right on, dude. Well, thanks so much for having dude, me, man. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for making it happen. Right on. I love you, buddy. All right, love yeah. you too, man. Yeah. Sick. Thank you. <laughs>